Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our Ireland versus Austria preview. Uh, we're going to get straight into it then. And it's a chance for Ireland to go uh, remain top of the group there. Uh, they have a chance to go three points clear. Yeah, they have a chance to go three points clear if only temporarily from Serbia. Obviously play Wales later on in the day. But it's more important in the sense that a win on Sunday will basically put Austria out of contention. It will put us seven points Ahead of Austria with only four games left. Yeah, and, they, is, and there's a lot of like Austrian players missing as well, so yeah. that'll give us a chance. But we'll kind of get more into it. We'll, we'll start off with our starting eleven. Probably yeah. the big talking point I'd say is our goalkeeping situation at the moment. Um, I'm going to be controversial, and I'm going to stick with Darren Randolph as opposed to Kieran Westwood. Um, yes, Randolph did make a bit of a mistake against Uruguay, but I think he's he's played in the Premier League this season, albeit not as much as he'd like to have. But he's played at the top level. Um, Westwood hasn't had a bad season either, but it's at a level below. And I think Randolph, he knows he knows the back four. He has he's actually played every game for Ireland so yeah. far in the qualifiers. So I'm going to stick with him, give him a vote of confidence, and let him prove himself. Yeah, because he hasn't let us down so far. How do you feel for about me? That? It's Randolph all day. You know, he's he's consistent. Obviously, he made a mistake against Uruguay, but at the end of the day, everyone makes a mistake, don't they? But Randolph, like. He won that game against Germany, that big long ball. I can't see many keepers doing that, but for me, he stuck it on Shane Long's yeah. chest and, and as far, a goal. As far as like uh, Ireland, he hasn't that, like the, that was the first error he's made for us. Like and people can say whatever they want about West Ham and all. I don't really like their fans anyway. Um, they're very <laughs> controversial either way. Um, but as far as Ireland, I'm sticking with. Them. What about you, Steve? Um, I'll be the, I'll be the, you know, odd one out. Then I'm gonna yeah, as always. I, yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Kieran Westwood for the pure fact that he mentioned the mistakes he made at West Ham and he lost his place on the side, had come out and said that he was rebuilding his confidence with Ireland and then Sunday happens and he makes another mistake and I just feel in the short term his confidence is going to be shot a bit after that because he just started to regain a little bit of form with the game um, against Mexico in which look he didn't have too much to do apart from concede the goals but he looked okay, he looked solid enough, but that mistake for me, I don't think we can afford to make that against Austria. I don't think we're yeah. going to be right. a far superior team, and I think West was just a more solid choice. He's had another exceptional season. I can see what you're saying, but at the same time, I don't think he done anything wrong other than that in the game. I mean, yeah, all right, yeah. The, the cross, but it, he did get lucky. He hit his shoulder and went down, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it happens to all the best, don't it? Yeah. It's a bit of a lose-lose situation for Martin O'Neill, I think, because... If he if he goes with Darren Randolph and Darren Randolph goes on to make a mistake on Sunday, well then people are going to ask questions about him. But then yeah. on the other hand, if he says right, I'm going to throw Randolph out, I'm going to switch it up, Randolph's and then if tough. Westwood goes and makes a mistake, either way it's not. Going I think up. Martin O'Neill is great though for building players' confidence. Anyway, I think he'd be having yeah. work with him all week, and always for big games. Yeah, always notice like if you're if you've been watching Celtic or Villa over the years when he was in charge and they always got up for bigger games and I think he'll be fine. He motivates his players. He gives players teams really great confidence. Yeah. 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 But we'll move on to another kind of controversial talking point is uh, the centre half position. For me, Shane Duffy is a given. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, 100%, yeah. So we're agreeing on that. We're, yeah, he's... We're 3 to 1 on Randolph, so Randolph is our number one. Yeah. yeah. And as far as our defence, Duffy and who would you part normally? For me, it's Kyo all day. John O'Shea, he's passed it, he's gone. I looked at him today in training this morning and he just doesn't seem to have that bite that he had when he was at Man United or earlier before he was in Sunderland and he's lost that yard of pace that he had just for me, he's passed it. Um, if, Mark, if Mark Yanko had been fit for Austria, I would have gone John O'Shea because he's a big, massive, physical player. But without Yanko there, I would actually go with Kevin Long from the weekend. I thought he was really solid alongside Duffy. And Kyo with Duffy on the Thursday in Mexico looked really, really shaky. I know they played in the three with Egan as well, but Long and Duffy looked really solid together. Burke Staller has more pace than Yanko does. Um, Kevin Long is quite a quick player for a central defender. Do you know how many games he played for Burnley? He played three, four. Three or four, wasn't yeah, yeah, he played four throughout the season. He played one early in the say, season and the last Martin O'Neill, I think uh, Kevin Long was one of the only players who played the full 90 against Uruguay as well. Yeah. Now, if, he, if Martin O'Neill wasn't considering him, he I think we would have seen him so come off at half time, time and said, yeah. right, we would have seen Andy Boyle goals. come yeah. on and play a little bit. Um, I think well, Pierce came on as well. So yeah. I think I think I don't think he I, showed. I think that Long. Is. I think Long is, is is going to be a decent player, and what I mean, what he's only t he's only in his early twenties. Yeah. So I think he, he he'll feature towards the end of the campaign. I think it's too big of a game to just 
It doesn't yeah, take him, yeah. I can see the I can see the other yeah. side to the argument. I, I don't think he's been tested. I mean, he's played a few games Burnley at the Premier League, in Premier League towards the end of the season when maybe there wasn't much to play for. Yeah. I mean, Austria in the World Cup qualifiers, everything to play for. It's a bit of a different story. I'm going to go for John O'Shea, which I know the lads haven't agreed with, just because experience. he's got he's got that big game experience. And if you think about it, we're without a captain and James Coleman at the moment. Uh, Walter's the captain against Uruguay. Do we even who's even gonna be the captain? I mean Brady played Brady was the captain against uh Iceland in that friendly. Yeah. So it's it's hard to know he'll he'll come in. I think O'Shea is a good leader. I think Glenn Whelan wouldn't be a bad show for a captain for the length of time he serves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think if Walters wasn't going to start, I think Glenn Whelan will probably yeah. get the armband yeah. and obviously if O'Shea doesn't start Whelan. Yeah. Well, well, as far as uh, I think that's gonna be another three one against you this time now. Is, yeah. Uh Long and Duffy. Yeah, for me. And then I don't think there's any disagreements with Cyrus Christie at right back after no. the performance against no. Uruguay. He's a yeah. smashing player. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a right back myself, and you know, yeah, he's he's exceptional. If it wasn't for James Coleman, he'd be in there all day. It's just yeah. James Coleman. That's what he was saying. If only he was uh, left footed, yeah, yeah. Uh, he'd be he'd, he'd be, be perfect. Given, you know, I think Christie could uh, with a few good performances in the qualifiers, he could he could make the step up to Premier League. Yeah, so absolutely. Premier League level pretty soon. He's been, he's been linked with clubs going into this summer already. Yeah, um, and. I could see him making the step up this summer because there's a few clubs. You look at a West Brom even who obviously Craig Dawson's played right back for them all season. But if they're gonna step on another level, they need a right back and full back who are actually going to attack. And he's pretty young. He's pretty young as well. So be, be a good investment. Great Barney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love my Barney. Um, yeah. Left back, left back. I think it is Stephen Ward because they're just there's no one else really. Yeah, there, is there? In Your the mate Ender Stevens is in the end squad. Yeah. Ender will be in the next Watch one. The Greg Cunningham being back fit when he's back fit for press yeah. and hopefully he finally gets a look but at the minute Stephen Ward is the only real choice ok yeah. and as far as uh, what way would you shape the midfield up I was thinking more of a like I'm Whelan th- Hendrick and uh, your mate in the hole <laughs> alright ok um, I would Wizzle. go I would go with Whelan Hendrick and Arthur as a three I think they're more yeah. solid and you're going to have a Austrian midfield of Baumgartlinger How? Alaba and Yanusovic who will play in a similar three but Alaba will bomb on and I think having Hendrik just to go on Alaba for the 90 minutes is really really important and let Arthur try and outplay Yanusovic with the ball at his feet in midfield because Yanusovic kind of makes them tick Alaba didn't do a lot against us in Vienna Yanusovic <coughs> wasn't fit Alaba is completely different Alaba is also carrying a knock on yeah. he's going to be sat out training and there was photographs of him wearing a knee brace in training so I mean if, 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 if so any mid- the- Irish midfielders if you're watching this break him up <laughs> simple as <laughs> me, he's going to go with Whelan, Hendrick and Brady and behind a striker okay. I think the and three of them yeah. is a given because obviously Hendrick and Brady play for Burnley and Whelan's just going to sit in front of that back four and does that's what, what I was going to say it was like if you were setting up Arthur Hendrick and Whelan, how would you would you set them as a flat three or two holes? I think you'd set them as one. a two and a I one. But I, think, I, I think you actually set them as a one and a two with Whelan sitting the deepest of the three. Arthur on the right or the left, depending on what side Alaba's on, and Hendrick on the side Alaba's on, on to, to just be disagree. athletic and up, down, up and down constantly. I'm going to slightly disagree. I reckon that he's going to go for Whelan, Hendrick and Arthur. Yeah. Um, but I think what's going to happen there is he's going to put Robbie Brady in the left-hand side of the midfield three with Arthur and Whelan in the centre. Jeff Hendrick out right mid. Where does that leave Jimmy Mack? That leaves on him the left. left wing. Oh, I thought you said you put him on the left. Or? No, Brady the left of a midfield three with okay. James McLean as the left winger. So oh, a flat yeah. like four three three. three. Uh, more four five one or four two three one, whatever way you want to look with at. With Hendrick that. wide right instead of Brady, yeah, Brady kind of playing through the centre. Yeah, I think I think I that's how I'd see him going because I think I think Hendrick uh, will occupy if a lab is on the left. I think Hendrick will occupy that space well, and then he'll break forward and bring other players into the game. So that's how that's how I think he'll go for it. Okay. Then so obviously big Johnny up front. Yeah. Well, we we we're gonna agree on on our midfield first of what we want, kind of want to, and then we'll. we'll I would agree. I would go Arthur Hendrick and Wheel as a midfield three, yeah. not with Brady in there with them as a midfield three. We're agreeing on the same players, but just how he's gonna. Yeah, I would like to, to see. Them. I would like to see. Um, yeah, I would like actually to see that uh, drop as I leave, leave him as an impact sub, yeah. but uh, have Hendrick. Wheel and Arthur, yeah, in there. But I would like to see. I would like to. What I would like to see, just for see if it's going for it, is have a Brady on the left or right, and McLean on the other wing. Yeah. With a striker, of maybe Walters in the middle, of like a four-three-three. That's what I'd like to see. I, I don't think he'll do it, but I, I think we could give him a real go if we did that. I think we looked a better team playing that sort of 
system Attack against Uruguay. Right, yeah. yeah, I think we looked a lot more because Brady was allowed to drift in. Yeah. from the right hand side and drift in and you know just kind of play that free role as that attack and he's midfielder. got that wand yeah he's got a wand of a left he's, he's well. worth keeping on the pitch just just for that free kick delivery I mean yeah. we always we always score goals from free kicks with and Shane Duffy there as yeah, well it's, it's, even today he was he was out practicing 20 minutes after training wick, oh it's wicked it's a wand you down to Viva today? Yeah, yeah I was down watching it and it was unbelievable Robbie Brady it's like it's, it's dedication extra yeah. half an hour him and Roy Keane practicing what, that's free that's kicks that's what Beckham used to do yeah like uh, striking options then uh, I, we agreed on, on, on Johnny Walters after yeah. the Uruguay game I mean you can't look any further I think anyway yeah no he led the line really well against Uruguay and looked um, looked a focal point that we actually sometimes even lack when Shane Long is fit because he likes to run in behind a lot of the time his first touch isn't always great when yeah. the ball comes into my feet and Walters' first touch is a lot better yeah, and then yeah. Longs is, and he kind I always of find that Longs always trying to fight an uphill battle by yeah. winning headers against, and he does win a lot of the headers. In fairness, like a fish out of water, like when he's getting up. Yeah, um, yeah. you don't me, see Long on the ball very often, do you? No. I mean, he's no. trying to get in behind every time, and if the if the ball's not playing off, it's very easy to keep him out, out of the game. I think. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Walters will get the ball, bring other people into the game, and give it out left, give it out right. Jo- Johnny gives you an out ball, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're under pressure, Austria is dominating, let's say, for the, about 25 minutes. Yeah, all you have to do up. is send it long, he'll stick it and he'll link it and he'll get other players in to play yeah, along. The wingers so. and stuff. Yeah. For he's me, one he's an he's outball. Yeah, he's one of them strikers who the ball comes into him and he's great at controlling the ball in his mm. chest and then taking it down, which Long isn't so good yeah. at. Um, long is obviously better on the turn, so when we put the ball in behind Walters, isn't as effective. But I think we're actually a better team sometimes. When we're playing in Germany or whatever, it's great to have yeah. long stretch of defence and let us get our players up. But when you're playing in Austria, he might play with the three at the back and might play, you know, a little bit further back from us and give us a little yeah. bit more space. Walter can get the ball to his feet, get the ball then out to Brady and or to Hendrick or McLean. He's, he's or also Carter. managed in the box with a header. Yeah. 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 If we whip balls in from, from Brady and stuff, Walters will be looking to get onto that. And even if even if he doesn't get a goal himself, he can even just cause confusion in the box. No he's matter big, where he plays, strong. he always like he's a threat. Like if, he, if he's on the right wing, he does yeah. a job there. The thing is, I think his best position probably would be striker, but he never gets yeah. to play there. Even yeah. so, uh, there always seems to be someone there in the position. Well, the well, li- his the buddy li- Arnautovic. Yeah, <laughs> the little bit he's played up top for Stoke this season. Crouch, he actually started to score a few goals and getting a bit yeah. of a run of things. It was against Liverpool. He got a goal early in the game. I think the home. He game always scores against, against Liverpool. He, I think he's an Everton. He's an Everton fan. fan. He loves yeah. scoring against Liverpool. <laughs> um, but yeah, he looks. At, he is a better player up front. I think because he doesn't have the pace to play yeah. at the international level yeah. out on the right to a really high standard. He's just a bit. He's a bit of a brute at times. But as he's Luke said, he, he just he is like when the ball needs to be uh, like lumped up out, out wide. Like he'd be the one to get up and win it or yeah. take it down and hold it up for us and get us up. To, uh, get players up to support them. Yeah, which mm-hmm. is which is great. Uh, now, as far as uh, we, we're missing a couple of other players there, um, we we mentioned Shane Long, didn't we? Yeah. Well, obviously he's a he's a big loss for me, but as we just said, Johnny Johnny Walters would be a great fit to put in instead. But yeah. I wouldn't like to have either Murphy or McGoldrick anywhere near. Well, McGoldrick's out now as well, so just near, so near the start eleven. Out. I mean, yeah. Murphy and Walters would be too similar to play up together. Oh yeah. yeah. Or bring on together, so I wouldn't yeah, like yeah. that. Like Wezo coming off the bench. I think suits kind of us more. Someone's getting tired. I think if the game is tight or it's nil all or whatever, substitution around 65 minutes or so of Murphy and Hildehan yeah. isn't exactly a bad idea because yeah. Murphy is an absolute menace in the air. He's so, so physical yeah. with his headers, wins a lot of headers. Hildehan playing just behind him. Great, absolute havoc with the ball, just dropping down to him for Murphy's headers. Murphy's great to come off the bench for 25 minutes ago. He's not going to... Yeah. He's not realistically, especially in an Ireland shirt, going to get you gold. No. But... He will create things and he will cause a little bit of havoc, havoc up there when he gets on. And they have a like. I would like to see McLean and uh, Bray taking lots of shots because, as far as I know, their keeper has only played two games this yeah. season. Uh, the keeper they have coming in for the game, um, he's only played two games or something this season for the. I think it was for, uh, Frankfurt, Frankfurt. Yeah. Yeah. and uh, one of them was a substitute appearance, so yeah. he wasn't even supposed to be starting. That. And he let, he let three in in that game actually. Even their backup goalkeeper is, I think, third choice at Stoke as well. So yeah. it's kind of. I just want to see the goal peppered with shots from yeah. from the likes of yeah. Brady, me, uh, Brady McLean, and Henrik. You know he can yeah. strike yeah. Them as well. At the end of the day, training is completely different to a game. Like you could be, you could train every day and not play for a month. But you're not going to be the same player as 
training every day and playing week in week out you know what I mean yeah. you've got to be consistent when you're playing yeah. and for me if you're not playing week in week out you're going to be confident it isn't going to be great well. is it you're going to be rusty as you said it's like a car if it hasn't ran in a month it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what I mean you get that battery start and it, it exactly give it a test and if, like we were talking about our goalkeeper in Randolph maybe not being the most confident at the moment but I mean if you've got this guy who's not made many appearances from, from, for Austria you're going to want to be putting balls in you want to test him early on let's yeah. see what he's about and get in the building kind of that would actually with him not having played much and not having played much at club level this yeah. this year it would actually lead me slightly towards maybe starting Daryl Murphy Cause he, he, because yeah. he's so big he's so much bigger than Walters physically I know Walters is good in the air but Murphy's just such Luke a said that presence. Walters didn't uh, train today so that could be an issue no he didn't train today so hopefully he'll be, he'll be alright I, I think he'll be okay I mean today was only an open training session I don't yeah. think there wouldn't be too much on display tactically they'd be kind no. of no. it's kind of more of a have a nice training session. Let the, let the young lads, yeah. young ones, go and yeah. take a few photographs. As far as well, we can only go into some of the players there, Miss. Now you've got a list there. Uh, yes. Yanko was, was their main kind of goal scoring threat, and yeah. then Aaron Edgevich is suspended yeah. now. Well, he Yanko's, can turn it on when he's when he's. Yanko's the only one who was called up to the original squad. He's actually in double figures in terms of a striker for goals at international level. He's Austria's, I think, second all-time leading goal scorer. Yeah. Um, Marcel Sabitz has had a really good season at uh, RB Leipzig as well he finished second in the Bundesliga he's going to be a big miss for them too and Arnautovic has had it on and off season with Stoke but we all know when Arnautovic is on his day just how oh, good he is and yeah. just how important and he, he is and he turns it on against big teams well. yeah. he does turn it he's, I know he's scored a lot of goals against United and stuff yeah. in the past um, he, um, he reminds me a bit of Shane Long he's big he's strong he's running behind but I think he's a big loss for Austria and yeah, yeah, especially yeah. because we're missing Coleman on that right wing, he'd have he'd have he'd have loved the idea. I know we said Christie's good, he's good going forward, not so good yeah. in defence, and I think he'd have liked that idea. But I mean, thank God he's out. Um, as far as uh, the your man has the wedding there, yeah, Ulmer, uh, Ulmer. I mean, Roy Keane wasn't too yeah, impressed with that. Was Roy Keane had a bit of a go. Um, he 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 knew that oh she would be playing a game at this time of year. There's always an international game this time of year. Yeah, and he decided to get married. I think. I mean that that hints that maybe the manager is not in full control of the squad or. Or perhaps, yeah, it is maybe not, not in full control, but there's definitely something going on behind the scenes. I mean, Yanko today was training, was fine, and suddenly he has tons of lights. You just get tons of lights out of anywhere. It's a bit fishy for me. It's a bit yeah. dodgy. You could feel oh. it coming on. Can't and you? then the main one, in my opinion, is um, the goalkeeper who conceded against James McLean. <coughs> um, Ozcan. Ozcan. Ramadan Ozcan. Yeah. He, he started as their number one goalkeeper in this campaign. And now he's retired. He yeah. he was called up to the squad and said, "I want to concentrate on my club career." Yeah. It's June. There's no club football. And uh, right. Christian Fuchs retired after the Euros as well. So yeah. it seems I think to be the, manic. Uh, maybe something happened in the Euros that I, they weren't could, happy about. I think it could so. have been. And there's the bigger loss, and we mentioned um, Oscar retiring, but Robert Almer still out with a crucial yeah. knee ligament injury, and he is a phenomenally good goalkeeper. And for them to be missing him to begin with is. It's a big, big loss, and they've missed them all through this campaign. I think it's actually told by how far behind they are, and how more like more suspect they've looked defensively. Um, for them in terms of players coming back, I mentioned earlier is Lakhon Yanusovic from Werder Bremen is a really big player for coming back in because he allows. Say his that. name slowly. Zlatko Yanusovic. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm not even going to try. Um, but he releases Alaba. He will sit deep with Baumgartlinger. Yeah. The two of them will sit there. Baumgartlinger will break everything up. He's kind of an Austrian Glenn Whelan, really. A little bit better on the ball, but he's an Austrian Glenn Whelan for all intents and purposes. And then Yunusovic will kind of move the ball forward. He transitions the play from defence into midfield, and he just allows Alaba to just cause mayhem. Yunusovic was really good against us in, um, in Dublin in the last qualifying campaign that we played yeah, against Austria. Yeah, when Alaba scored that goal. Yeah, when yeah. Alaba scored the goal and he released Alaba to really, you know, cause he's, us a lot. He's kind of like an Austrian West Hulan, isn't he? He's, yeah. of, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good number 10. They do produce some good players. I think that they might have some players there that we, we're not entirely sure about that might have a good game as well. But yeah. essentially, if we beat these now, we'll probably uh, knock them out. Of the, uh, no, it's, it's the game one. over for them if, if they don't. I mean, even a draw wouldn't really be. Well, that's, yeah, yeah like they'd be, if we were to... If we were to beat them on Sunday, that's seven points yeah. behind us and possibly seven points behind Serbia as well. They're out at that Game point. Off. For me, still, well, especially because we still have to play Georgia and Moldova. Serbia still have to play Georgia and Moldova. That should be six points for each of us. So it's Austria pretty much done. Austria have to travel to well. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, Georgia are decent enough though. But, uh, what are we going to say? For me, if we, if we take out Alaba, I think... We have to beat it in. As long as we... Alaba's our phenomenal Just target player. that knee. Yeah. Do you hear me, Jeff, if you're watching? James McLean. 
Just he'll take, do it. Take he'll he'll do it no bother. <laughs> James Clean do it anyway. He doesn't need to be told. <laughs> uh, he'll just see the new race, right? Yeah, see he'll, red. He'll have seen the pictures. <laughs> um, yeah, and then um, what about their Guido? Yeah, they've Yanko is out, which on the surface might look like a good thing for us. Um, their other their other um, strikers have got zero goals between them and about twelve yeah. caps. But that's a bit deceiving. They've got this guy called uh, Gudio Bergstaller who plays for Schalke. And he moved from the German second division after scoring about 15, 15, 20 odd goals. He moved to Schalke and he got nine goals and 17 appearances. And I think if you include the Europa League games, he got 12 and about 20 appearances. So, could be a good player. He's, um, from I've seen a little bit of him more in the Europa League than anything this year. He's a much more, he will hold the ball up pretty well. He's kind of... A, He's like a more classy version of John Walters in that sense, but he's got a lot more pace than a Walters would, and he will get in behind your defence. He will try and stretch it. He, for me, is a better player than Yanko, yeah. but Yanko's such a physical presence, and he really suits the way that Austria play from a set-piece standpoint. He's got, he's got the international pedigree. He knows yeah. that he's a, this guy hasn't scored in nine appearances for Austria. Yeah. But, I mean, as I said, that could be deceiving. He could go and have he could bring his club well, form. He's, he's a late bloomer, as you say, he only moved to Schalke from the second division last year and he's twenty eight years old now, but yeah. he's kind of one of them strikers who's really only coming into his peak at yeah. this point now. Could we make a break from it's yeah, sim- similar to Wes Houlihan, isn't he? He only yeah. started to come into his international peak well, at twenty eight years. Twenty eight, yeah. twenty eight. About the same age. Yeah. So. so it's really similar and hopefully he can't do the job against us. Yeah, and um, in terms of their defence, they're going to probably play. Dragovic and Vimmer will definitely start. And Is that Vimmer off Spurs? Yeah, Vimmer has not played a lot for Spurs. Yeah, this yeah, season yeah. I, don't think he, I don't think he's that good. And as you were saying about rustiness. Yeah, um, and Dragovic, who was really for a player who moved to. Who did he sign? He went from. He's, he signed for Leverkusen last summer. From, was it, was it uh, Kiev? Yeah, yeah, well, Kiev, yeah. spent a couple of years at Kiev and then has he's gone a good to player, Leverkusen. Though. Yeah, he's a good player and he went with a really high reputation to Leverkusen. And but they had a terrible season. He's really stalled this year along with the team in general. He's not had a great season. Mm. Vimmer hasn't played a lot and as you were saying beforehand, Cormac, that Hintergaard might come in as well Yeah, because Ilsanker is on their full-backs and Ilsanker is out. So they may revert to a three at the back and kind of essentially play a little bit more attacking. There's even been a talk of Alaba fitting in on left wing back, yeah. more like his traditional role of Bayern Munich. That if, would suit if they us go. more. I think it would. I think the further I'd away Alaba is from the centre of the option, uh, centre of action, yeah. I think is the be- is better. I yeah, he is a threat regardless of where he plays. He's a bit like what like, he's a he's obviously better, better, than, uh, he's better than Walters, but like yeah. he can be used in, comp- in other places and still play well. Yeah, he's, he's a bit versatility about him, doesn't yeah, he? Utility man. I put it as well. You mentioned earlier on about Christie being a little bit suspect defensively yeah. maybe and he keeps giving me stick for it that I think he's suspect defensively too I don't, don't let I, me down don't let me down I don't think Alaba, I don't think Alaba shifting to left wing back is actually necessarily a good thing for us mm. because I think it exposes him if we were to play a little bit more narrow or Brady was on the right and he was kind of Brady's yeah. going to drift in from the right constantly onto his left foot we're leaving ourselves a little bit there. he probably will though and we're going to kind of have Christie a little bit exposed one on one against Alaba, and I don't really fancy yeah. that for ninety minutes. And it might actually stifle Christie going forward as well, yeah. which he is a big threat for us going forward. It's and Cindy Uruguay again. But for yeah. me, as Colm said earlier, Jeff Hendrick could play on that yeah. right side. Yeah, and if he does, I think they'll double up on Alaba and then cut him out of the game, and then that way we could have different. I think it'll be interesting to see how they start, and then that's kind of how O'Neill tactically might work yeah. work against because he's not going to know till well, the teams are announced. Yeah, I think you see when the teams probably, are announced, Hendrick and Brady are going to be in the team. We kind of know that already, and I think if, as you say, if Alaba goes, McLean. if Alaba goes wide left, though, you will. I would hope to see Hendrick, Hendrick out to the right yeah. and Brady move into the middle to just give Christie that little bit more yeah. defensive help where he can actually bomb forward that a little bit more. You might sacrifice Hendrick, yeah. but I think Christie's more I think, important I think Hendrick is there Hendrick. for that. I think, I think Hendrick's a high-energy player. He's big, he's strong. He's not always there to make chances. He's kind of there. Yeah. I think the man marking to do like, the dirty work. Yeah, sort of. yeah. I think it's a it's a good game for for Ireland because I mean this is the first time in a long time that we've been favourites to actually go into a big game and, and yeah. win. I mean the last time we played Austria, uh, not not the game where McLean scored, but in the last uh, in the last of qualifiers campaign, yeah. that we played against them, um, they were the favourite team. And it's nice to actually be. I wouldn't because we're usually the always see, isn't it? Yeah. We're yeah. usually always the underdogs. It's nice to actually see us getting a bit of recognition for getting the good results that yeah. we have been getting. And I think um, to kind of add to it as well, every time, um, 
but that we're actually looking at it from a fan standpoint that it's actually exciting as a game to go into to watch because we don't look like we're going to sit with 10 men behind the ball and try and just counter attack yeah. them we actually look like we're going to come out and play and we're going to give Austria a game which is refreshing because ever since Trapattoni took over and even the start of the O'Neill yeah. kind of tenure against every big team even in Austria even what we've seen against Wales just sat back the last game yeah yeah, that was awful. There's a lot of injuries uh, to be fair, so I think we we'll get yeah, him a pass on that one. But I think he he'll know as well that Austria, with all the kind of suspensions, especially attacking wise, are probably there for the taking in that sense. And the yeah. stuff that's what's going on behind the scenes, you know, it's, it, that's not good for, for that, Austria. Yeah. And Matt O'Neill's obviously looking at that thing, and like, they're up for the grabs. And if we win, it's it's a massive three points if yeah. we win. It puts us right back up there. I mean, if we were to win, I I think I could see their coach Marcel Collar getting the sack. Which could be, club jobs that, that could be a good thing. That could be a good thing because I think what happened there is they could get a new guy in. They've obviously got a talented squad of players. I think with Alaba yeah. and Nerovich, they could. I, they I could, know, they could I stop know where you're going with I'm this. I'm going to say they could stop, think, and maybe look towards the next qualifiers and go right. Let's sort this world ranking out. Let's start getting the confidence up for the next one. No, I think they'll so, purposely play bad. Is that what you mean? No, I was going to say the sack. No, no, I reckon he's gone if he loses. I think he's gone. No, but I, I think like a lot of like player power, like. When Martinez was manager of Everton, they, like they did, they were purposely playing bad to get him the sack, and that's probably what uh, Austria. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not saying they're going to do that for this game. I think they'll kind of. I think this will be their kind of their well, last. Just to shot. get a new manager, and that's, yeah, that's. I think this will be their I last see, shot. Like, I think if if this lad if if they if they don't beat us, I think he could be gone, and a new guy could bring them confidence, which could see them do us favors in other results. I mean, Serbia still have to travel to Vienna, and they've only lost their home once in. I think. Two or three campaigns, and we were the team yeah. to bet them. So I mean, yeah. I can we talk actually a bit about their uh, results yeah. there? We have been yeah. there. So I mean, they beat Georgia two one away, uh, drew two two at Wales at home, and then lost three two to, to Austria. Serbia, uh, Serbia. <laughs> yeah, Austria. Yeah, Austria. Uh, yeah. yeah, to Serbia, and then obviously we beat them, and then they beat Moldova. So I mean, some of their results, they they look, they score goals in most of the games they played in Wales and Serbia. They got two goals against as well. But they lead goals. That's the same. I time. know, but they score goals too. Yeah. And when we score, we don't score that many too. I yeah. know we did score three the other day, but in a general sense, when we do score, it's usually two one or one nil. Yeah. Is I think I think Arnautovic being out there. Arnautovic is their top goal scorer. Has to be pointed um, out. Um, yeah. Janko and Arnautovic have two goals each. Yeah. And if you look, they've only scored. Um, they've only scored eight goals in the whole campaign. Yeah, and they have so, four. Yeah, so. I'm just saying for the bigger teams, they yeah. tend to score more goals. And yeah. that get, like, their last game against Moldova was a uh, nil all with about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, got two late goals, so it wasn't wasn't an impressive win. Moldova are an awful side. Yeah, yeah they're not so, great. I mean, where are they really up to see on Sunday? I uh, and struggling at home against them for 70 odd minutes as well is really really desperate because I know we went to Moldova and didn't exactly cover ourselves yeah. in glory, but it's away. that was away from home and it's a difficult. Chisinau is going to be a difficult place to go to. Where? Always. To the capital of Moldova. Say it again. Educate yourself. Chisinau. No, it's just the way you say it. <laughs> Chisinau. Um, but, yeah, them coming, you know, Moldova came to Vienna and made it difficult for Austria put it for 70 minutes. Day, you know? Whereas, if Mo when Moldova come to here, or have, have we played them yet? Played we played them away. Them away. Yeah. Have we played Mahomes? Not yet, no. Okay, when they come, hopefully, I reckon we're going to bash well, we, them. I, I think yeah. half it depends on the crowd as well. If the crowd, if the if the Irish crowd get the players going, I don't, I, now, we've all been to games in the Aviva and Lansdowne, and when the crowd gets going, you can feel it with the players. They yeah. li they get a lift. They get a yeah. fluid. And yeah. we've, we've beaten many big teams because of it in the past. Probably the most noticeable one was probably the Holland game, but um, yeah. even but the German Germany recently. Yeah, Germany as well. The atmosphere was electric, and you could even see by the players Bosnia they were up well. for yeah. it. They were they were pressing, they were getting around the pitch yeah. even even more than they should because at the end of the day, you're you're um, what do you call it? I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> I think Martin O'Neill brings the excitement back to uh, to the fans, and there's that buzz back around the ground, and uh, it seems like like the the game's sold out. Yeah. And people are actually looking forward to going to the games. I've I don't know how many people are asking like for tickets. Yeah, see all, all over Facebook and stuff have had tickets for this and that. I've not seen that for a non Germany yeah. basic yeah. basically because we always have Germany in qualifying. Yeah. Um, I've not seen it for a non Germany game in a long time for Ireland. The excitement is back. I think. Yeah. Even, I think. even for the Wales game, it, yeah. it was sold out. You know, yeah. and there was yeah. people begging yeah. for tickets outside yeah. the ground. I was actually in um, what's the name of that place? Uh, I can't remember it anyway, um, but I was in the, I can't 
can't remember the name of the pub, but it was just full of Wales fans. Yeah. I was the only Irish fan there, and all these Welsh fans came over. They couldn't even get tickets into the game because yeah. it was it was just jam packed. There'd be three thousand Austrians in attendance as well. They sold out their allocation, which yeah. I think you know. I think it's actually sometimes good to have a lot of away fans because if they if they're kind of if they're making an atmosphere, get the home fans going as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think doesn't like it's it's kind of boring when you play these small teams, Andorra, and Moldova, or whatever. There's yeah. no fans. There's no atmosphere. Yeah, so exactly. the match Day, kind of, I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, like I think, away fans will bring a good atmosphere, and I think that will bring the Irish fans out as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah and as far as uh, we're going to be down outside the Aviva doing uh, in match preview and uh, match reaction down at the game. So if you see us outside the ground, come over and have a chat with us. Uh, we want to get your opinions of the game. Thanks to Cormac and Luke for coming on the show. Uh, stay tuned for more stuff over the weekend. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great weekend.